What is going on, guys? Welcome on into today's FanDuel Hurry Up. Our tour around the NFL continues as we are looking to get you set in your season-long fantasy football drafts going team by team, giving you a fantasy football outlook. I'm going to give you three guys for today from the pride of Baltimore, the Baltimore Ravens, that you should keep an eye on in fantasy football drafts. And this is actually an offense that I love because there are really only three guys that I'm targeting here that I can see as impactful league winners. We know that the backfield carries get split in Baltimore, so it's really hard to identify a super high up side guy there. I think you've got three guys that clearly stand out above the rest, and I could see any of them being key pieces on a team that lends a league this year. And of course, when we start with the Ravens, you guys know that probably means we start with Lamar Jackson. And I think with Lamar, we're being very punitive into what we saw most recently. We're quick to remember the four interceptions against Cleveland, the injury against Cleveland, and kind of struggling at times last year. We also forget just last year, Lamar had some absurd performances, both in real life and in fantasy. Had the come from behind wins over Kansas City, Minnesota, and Indianapolis, and he scored at least 34 half PPR get points per game in all of them. Really, it was just an off year for Lamar with his accuracy. He's never been the most accurate guy, but he was 28th in on-target throw percentage last year. I think in a contract year, coming back healthy, if he can sneak back into the top 20, it will suit his game. And this is a guy we know doesn't really need a lot from his throwing to pay off in fantasy football. He averages more rushing yards per game than Alvin Kamara. He has a higher rushing success rate than Aaron Jones or Leonard Fournette, and he averages more rushing yards over expectation than Devin Singletary. He is truly a dynamic rushing talent that can also throw for 250 plus yards a game and throw a few touchdowns. The passing game to me is just upside. It's extra. I don't think Lamar's floor is nearly as poor as a lot of fantasy evaluators do, and I think he's a key consideration. Once you get into that mid-tier of the top 10 of fantasy quarterbacks, Lamar's a guy that I probably would pluck off the board above, above a bunch in that same area. But Moving on from there, we look at Lamar's targets, and they are absolutely fantasy viable as well. We know that starts with Mark Andrews, the big tight end, and he would be fantasy viable enough just because he was the tight end too last year, averaged over 14 half PPR points per game, but his role is getting even better this year. Hollywood Brown, Sammy Watkins, both vacating a target share north of 21%. Andrews already led to all tight ends with a 26.1% target share. He could push 30 this year as far as a tight end is concerned, and I think if Andrews is a guy that scores a lot, and you think maybe touchdown regression is on the way for him. He scored nine times last year, but Pro Football Focus's expected fantasy points model, they actually pegged him for 10.6 touchdowns based on his work, based on his role, based on his red zone work. And you look at Travis Kelsey, Mark Andrews. They were the two dominant tight ends in fantasy last year. Both of their roles are getting better because the wide receiver one, he's out the door. I'm really trying to do whatever I can to leave my fantasy draft with one of those two guys. I think it's a significant drop down to Kyle Pitts and Dalton Schultz, so I really try to emphasize, regardless of draft capital, if Kelsey is there, I want to take him, and if he's not there, Mark Andrews is a great, great set second option. But there is one more guy to keep an eye on in this Ravens offense. Obviously, the backfield is a little concerning, but I think there is a second-year receiver that is primed for a breakout, exactly like we saw from Michael Pittman Jr. of the Indianapolis Colts last year, thrust into a starting role on an offense that we kind of ignore because it's not sexy, it's not high-flying, it's not a huge passing offense. That is Rashad Bateman, the former second-round pick from Minnesota, entering his sophomore campaign, and I love Bateman this year because you never really know how much of a target share dilemma is the player's ability versus just what was in front of them. You look at what Bateman had to deal with last year, Sammy Watkins, Hollywood Brown, and the aforementioned Mark Andrews, they are all primed to lead their own teams this year in target share if Watkins ends up being the wide receiver one in Green Bay. Bateman had a lot of competition. This year, it's not nearly as much so, and still in his rookie year, he managed a 17.1% target share. And if you're worried about the ability, he actually had a higher adjusted fantasy points per target metric than Hollywood Brown did. So Bateman should fill into this role well, and the thing that I love is there is not a lot of competition here. You have James Prochet, Devin Duvernay. It feels a lot like Michael Pittman's competition last year with an older T.Y. Hilton, Zach Pascal. They never fixed that position on the other side the entire season. It was Pittman that was chowing deep into the playoffs and championship games of your fantasy league. I think Rashad Bateman can absolutely do the same.